This isn't gonna work well. <laughs> it's fun. In this video, we're gonna finish the basic landscaping for the Dowling's Orchard Diorama. We're also gonna put in a fascia, tie all that together using nothing but regular guy techniques. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Brown and welcome to It's My Railroad. On this channel, we bring you the highest quality modeling videos we possibly can, showing how to use regular guy techniques to build dioramas, scenes, models, even train stuff, uh, just like you see behind me here. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure to subscribe. And don't forget to push that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, welcome back to the Dowling's Orchard Diorama Project. Got a bunch of work done since the last time we were together, even though some of it may not be quite so obvious. Let me take you through it real quick and then I'm gonna show it to you. I went through and I put this fascia on and in doing so, learned something significant that I'm gonna share with you at the end of this episode. So make sure you stick around for that. But I put it on, got it to follow the contour, and then I chose to sort of blend the scenery right in with the edge of it. Come the end of the day, I think it looks really good. I'm going to show you how I did that. I wanted to get these fruit trees in back here in this orchard, but unfortunately, uh, we just kind of ran out of time. <laughs> I didn't have time to do it, so we're going to do that next time for sure. I can't wait to get my orchard planted, by the way. But to get going on this whole thing, and I'll sort of take you through it as we move along, I went through and I put in the dirt road portion, which... I had to touch up later because I put the fascia on it, kind of messed up a little bit of it. Again, we'll get to that later. I did this by putting down dirt just like you would any other kind of ground cover. Just laid it right down on the styrofoam. And then I doused it with alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, and used a white glue solution on there and let it dry. When it was done drying, it looked like hard mud with cracks in it, which was okay because this is kind of a, a wet area, Fertile Valley is, gets a lot of moisture. But to then go past that and make the traveled parts look traveled, I basically sifted some dirt onto that, brushed it around with a brush, and then just used my fingers to sort of rub it in, even going down the road. So that came out pretty awesome. And I guess now I need to take you into what we're doing next. That dirt road really makes this scene pop really brings it to life i can't wait to get on putting the static grass in and some of the other details plant the orchard back here i get a cool idea for that by the way but i think we need to interrupt the process right now to do something else and that is this i need to put my fascia in why do you need to put your fascia in now steve i'm glad you asked here's the thing this is not exactly a, a perfect curve in here it's got some bumps in it here and there you know and the extruded foam board sticks out further than the frame right here. I think I have the same problem down there. And then back here, the, uh, the backdrop sticks out a little too far. Here's the thing, if I leave it like that and then put on the uh, fascia, it's not going to be perfect. There's gonna be gaps all through there and that's not gonna look good. We need to bring the scenery, the landscaping right up to the fascia to make it look really awesome. I also have a problem down here where the road uh, kicks in. Unfortunately, there's a little gap down there that <clears throat> I, I don't know how I let that happen, but I did. We're gonna have to fix that as we move forward. So here's what I want to do. I'm gonna get some tools out. I'm gonna start checking the plane here. We'll get a piece of uh, tempered hardboard cut and sort of so we can clamp it on there and just see how it's gonna come out. So we're gonna get that done and then see if we can get up to planting the orchard. But first things first, let's get the fascia in.
So I got that uh, sanded down. It seems pretty flush everywhere. It looks pretty good, actually. Um, by the way, the uh, belt sander, not necessarily the way to go. At home, I wouldn't recommend it unless you've got some skill with it because it, uh, it hogs it out, baby. But it managed to get it done really well, which brings me to another thing. This extruded foam board takes to a belt sander really well. Uh, it, it smoothed it out. If you had something else, white styrofoam, I think it would just ate it up and made a big mess out of it. Anyway, I'm gonna get me a piece of tempered hardboard about this big, kind of all the way through, back to about where this tunnel portal is, and get it cut, clamp it in place, and we're gonna see how we look. So give me a minute to cut that out. I'll be right back. All right, so we've got the tempered hardboard clamped in place. As you can see behind, there's some gaps here and there we're gonna have to deal with later. But I went ahead and set this edge right at the bottom of this frame over here because that's where the bottom's gonna end up. I put the level on the bottom of it and made the bottom level. So now what we're gonna do is take a pencil and get inside and trace along the contour of this tempered hardboard and see if after doing that, I can uh, cut it out with a jigsaw and uh, put it back up and see if it looks halfway decent. So I'm gonna mark it out real quick, cut it, we'll put it back in and see how it looks. Well, there it is. I cut this thing out with the jigsaw and I intentionally kind of cut it a little too tall because once you do it, you're kind of done with it, right? I don't want to cut this thing twice. So what I figure I would do now is go through and glue it and screw it down. Eventually I'll pull the screws out and uh, mud over them because on the other side of the layout, I've got screws holding it in. I just don't like the way it looks. So this is going to become a permanent piece of the railroad. So. What you're gonna see now is me taking this back off again, putting some glue all in where the framework is, driving some drywall screws in there to hold it in place temporarily. After that, while it dries, I think we can get on that orchard. That's gonna be exciting stuff. Let's get on it. Well, the uh, tempered hardboard is screwed and glued. Got a little glue on my fingers, but it's what I had to do to get it done. I'm hoping when I pull those screws out, that'll stay in place. We can patch over all of that and make it look really pretty. We'll see when we get to that part. But another problem presented itself, and that is this. Where the landscaping is, here and there, uh, not so bad. I'm going to take a Dremel and I'm going to shape the hardboard right down to the landscaping. It's going to be awesome, I think, when I'm done. The problem is... Right along here, uh, it sticks up pretty high. I don't know what I did there, but I'm going to do something a little unorthodox, and that is I'm going to take my jigsaw, and I'm going to run along just above the landscaping all the way down to get it pretty close, and then the Dremel will take care of it. But when I get to the road, I'm going to kind of come up a little bit because I don't want to screw up my new road and contour it up in here. Back in there, it looks pretty good so far. Dremel will take care of that. So... Give me a second to hook up that jigsaw. We're gonna bring it in and we're gonna rip this sucker.
Well, ha, put the jigsaw in here and cut that all out. That's amazing stuff. Uh, again, uh, that's probably not the right way to do it, but that's the way I ended up doing it. And I nicked the scenery here and there, but that's what I was saying. I'd rather repair scenery than uh, like repair a road or something else, because uh, I can do that easy enough. So what I'm gonna do now is take my Dremel, go all along this edge and just fine tune it. I'm gonna put a barrel sander on the Dremel to do that. And we're gonna get it very close and see how it looks from there. When we're done, and this is all dried and I can pull the drywall screws out and know things are going good. Then we'll patch in the gap we have right there using, I don't know, some method, maybe bubble gum. We'll see what happens when we get there. But for now, let's get the Dremel out. This is taking too long. Let's get out the big guns, shall we? Ha! Let's roll. To get rid of this gap I have here in the front where the fascia is, I decided just to take some regular drywall mud and slather it on there. And I used that opportunity to cover the screw holes and get it prepped for painting. We're not gonna paint it yet though. I'm gonna wait till I finish the rest of the fascia. But I slathered it on there, let it dry, sanded it smooth, and then went through and just brought the scenery right back up to it. I painted the rest of the layout with brown chalk paint before putting any ground cover on. So I reproduced that effort up here in the front. I put my brown chalk paint all the way down. And then I went through and I put all of the scenery back in place.
So for those of you wondering how we're gonna get the truck to come up and turn around and then back into the loading dock, I prepared a little special feature for you that you're gonna see right now. Watch this. The truck comes up on the track side. Hangs a U-turn across the back. Heads down towards the road and then stops, backs up to the loading dock. Easy peasy, but I already kind of had that factored in before I started building everything. So that is that. Let's just get to finishing up the road over here and then see whatever's next. I learned something very significant during this video, and that is this, order of events. That should have gone on way earlier in the process. I know a lot of you guys already know that, and uh, eh, it was an error on my part. By doing it after the fact, I had dust everywhere I had to contain, I had scenery that had to get replaced, and fortunately for me, I was able to patch everything up, and it still looks pretty good, but I don't know that that would always be the case. But the reason I put this off I, was, I wasn't exactly certain how I was going to connect it. Uh, there was some weird surfaces over there. I got this curve that's just extruded foam board. I didn't know how I was going to be able to connect it. But just sort of shoving ahead and doing it, I pulled it off. And it, it looks great. Uh, the end result is nice. So, you know, if you're putting off doing part of your railroad or your model, your diorama, because you're really not sure how to do it, either go experiment on something else so you're comfortable with it or just shove off it's it's a model um, it can be repaired it can be modified after the fact as i just showed you in this video speaking of which thank you for joining me and watching this video today i sure hope you had a good time doing it i had a great time making the video next time we're going to try to get those uh fruit trees installed up there but until then my name is steve brown and rail on my friends